Welcome back to CTN. I'm your host, Robert Van Sluten. Let's get started. Let's revisit the problem we had demonstrated in the end of the last episode. If I change the slider value and I go back to the home page and I terminate the application and re-enter it. I would really like the last value that I had selected to be persistent. And we're going to do that in this episode. Let's get started. Okay, I went ahead and made all the changes to the slider wrap. So the approach in this episode is code review. I'm going to show you what I've done. Now, we are in the application delegate.h and we covered the application delegate in the last episode. So if you haven't seen that one, you probably should go back and watch that one first. The only thing I've added here is a property. Now this is a public property. It's in the .h. And the type is ns-integer, so it's simply called value. Now ns-integer is just simply typedef to an int in the system. So it's not, a, it's not an object. And you'll notice as an argument to the property Objective-C directive here, I say assign. In other words, I don't have a strong or weak relationship. It's just a simple variable and it gets assigned when it's when it's set. Of course it is not atomic because I don't want all the locking semaphore mechanism that would be if it was defaulted to atomic. Let's go over to the view controller.m file. Take a look at some of that code. Now to start with, I've added two properties to the .m. The first is an outlet to the slider itself, because obviously whatever the persistent value is that's stored, I want to set the slider and the label to. The second property is a pointer to the app delegate. In other words, I find the app delegate and I just simply store where that is. Now if I go down to view did load, which is where the view controller comes up, let's take a look at this code here. Self.appDelegate equals, now I go to the application, the shared application, and I get the delegate, the property dot delegate. Fine. I got it once, I have it. Now, I'm going to go get the value that I've defined as a property in the app delegate itself. Now, we haven't looked at that code yet, but we will. So, whatever that property currently is, app delegate.value, I set it equal to just a local variable value that's on the stack here. I go and change the slider, and I go and change the label. So I pulled a value out of the app delegate, which is our data model in our MVC construct, and I've set up the user interface. Now let's take a look at what happens when our action happens. In other words, our slider has actually changed value. Well, obviously, I, I get the slider value, sender dot value. And I set the label. But what I do now is I go to the app delegate and I set its value equal to whatever the new slider value is. Now let's go back and we'll go, we'll go over to the app delegate dot m and we'll look at how this integer actually persists.
All right, we're going to start in the <clears throat> application did finish launching method, which is the, the method that's invoked as soon as the application starts. There is this class, nsuserDefaults, and what that basically is, is it gives you access to a persistent dictionary. It's in the file system. The way you get it is nsuserDefaults, standard user defaults returns a pointer to it. Now what I'm going to store in there, or what I will be storing in there, is an ns number. Now realize that <clears throat> the first time the application is executed, there is, it, it, there's nothing in there. All right. So what I may be getting out of it is nothing. I'm going to get a, a nil. I'm going to ask for an ns number. Um, pointer name is num. And if you take a look at the definition for this class, you'll find that there are various types of things you can store and retrieve, and one of them is an int. The problem is with using an int versus an object is that if there is no, if there's nothing stored, the int will return back a zero. And I want to distinguish between a value of zero and non-existence. In other words, the first time it executes. So I'm getting an object for key. Now this string, last value, is just simply a, the, the key I'm using for what I'm storing. And if there is an ns number, I'll end up getting a pointer to it. If there isn't, I'll get a null. And I test for that. If it's a case where there isn't any anything there, um, I'm going to default the value to self.value equals 50. If there is, I'm going to set self.value equal to whatever the integer value is of num. So, the application starts, we look on our data model, if there's information there, we use it. If there isn't, we have a default value. Now, taking a look at will resign active. Now, I'm putting code there because the termination method doesn't get invoked. So I'm going to do my storage here. I want to get to nsuserDefaults again, same line of code. And I want to actually create an ns number object. And I use ns number number with int, whatever self.value is. So that's going to actually create an ns number object pointed to by num. And then in user defaults, I'm going to say set object num. In other words, the object is num for key, same key used up here. Now to actually cause the dictionary to be written out of out to the file system, I say user defaults synchronize. Now I could have made the property that was defined in the app delegate.h instead of type ns integer I could have made it ns number. However, I want to show an example of using ns integer as a property and it also kind of exposes the data model to the view controller which I didn't really want to do. That's all the code. Don't forget that the CTN app delegate dot H is imported into the view controller dot M. Let's go to the next slide and actually test the app. Okay, in preparation for our testing, I've done two things. The first is I did a reset content in settings for the simulator to clear it out. There's no residual data. The second is I set three breakpoints. One for the if condition when there is data stored already in the, the dictionary, and the second when there isn't, and a third just before I synchronize. Of course you can set breakpoints and 
remove them through clicking in the gutter here. You can also manage them through the navigator. I'm going to run this. And you'll notice where I stopped is where there is no data in the data model. So I'm defaulting to 50. If I go down to the debug portion here, and I'm going to say continue execution. OK, now we're up and running. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the home button. Now I've gone to, to background, and I'm about to synchronize the data. So I will continue. I'm going to rerun. Brings it back up again. It's still 100. You notice neither of these two breakpoints were hit because the application was already there. It had started. It was just suspended in background. I'm going to go back to background. Resynchronize the database. However, there was no changes. This time, I'm going to terminate the application. And I'm simply going to restart it. Well, it's at 100. That's where it was before. We didn't need breakpoints because I didn't start from Xcode. We're not, Xcode is no longer attached to this run. However, we did go get our information out of our data model and it's displayed on the screen. That's it. We solved the problem. Thanks for watching.